Hi, it's Sandy from Nana's Crafts and More, and today we're going to be making a floral wreath with this particular petal, and I am going to show you on this first one, I have all my petals cut out. I'm going to show you with this one how I made the petal, and it's the exact same for all three colors. It's, this is going to be the center, so it's a 4th of July wreath, flower wreath, and I'm going to use this board. It kind of takes after the unique in the creek, but I found this board on Amazon and I bought them five for, I forget how many dollars. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. Um, you'll see I already loaded the first, the second, and the third rows. These two right here are what is going to be the top and where we'll put the hanger in. So these two always say that they're the top. Um, so let's get started and I will show you how I made the petal. I cut, well, first of all, I should tell you, I cut all of my, my pieces 10 by 10 and I used a wood burner so that it would cut down on the fraying. When I'm cutting this, I'm flipping it over. You got your factory sides, your cut edges, and I'm just turning it to a diamond and I'm going to use this as a guide because I don't trust myself you know I get a little wobbly all right so once you get this all lined up uh, you could take your rotary color cutter and I just want to make sure we're okay so I just follow this and I go down and I get halfway, I stop and I make sure I got pressure up here and go finish all the way. And then I get these two and you can see I am laying one on top of the other and my factory sides are on the same. And you, what you really want to focus on is that this tip is what is the most important part of the petal. So what I do is I take a clip and I'll clip right here on the tip and I'll lay it down, make sure my edges are all even. And from the tip, I pull down and I pinch and then I go, I try and go one, two, three. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. One, two, three. And over here, one, two, three. And then I'll hold this really tight and I will wrap it. And I just go two times when I'm wrapping. Okay, and then what I do is I take this, this, and I just kind of spread it out, make the petal look a little bit fuller, and that's how you make this petal. I'm sure it has a name. I'm sorry, I don't remember what the name is. And then I'm just gonna take and clip this off a little bit in my garbage. So it's a little bit neater. I will clean this off and we will move the board over and get started loading the board. This wreath should not take a lot of time to do being I did a lot of the prep work ahead of time. So I left this um, pretty open. So I just kind of pushed down to like open it up a little bit wider so that I could slip this in. And then, because my hands are so bad right now, I'm just going to use this to tighten it up. And then we can just grab a few more big leaves and go around and get them in. And I try to get the zip tie 
right on top, right over the rubber band. And we always want our factory edge to cover the unfinished edge. So this will go over this. And I probably could go the other way. It might be easier. And then as you do them, you can kind of go under and lift them up a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do this whole way around. It takes 16 of the blue petals and then I'm going to I have already cut red and white so I'm going this way because our center has a lot of like blue on it and I wanted to have it pop more with the red at the center so that's what I'm going to do is after I put this in, I'll put the white on and then the red. And I think that'll look awesome. The center I got from Monkey's Creations. They sell them there. I'm going to order some of the supplies I need to start making my own. And then I may put those up in my Etsy shop. Which is where you'll be able to find this wreath after I'm finished with it. I'll put it up in my shop for sale. Just my camera. <coughs> Try and move this in a little more so you can see. So again, I'm just taking my pedal, just applying a little bit of pressure onto the zip tie to make it a little more rounder to squeeze this in a little bit better. And then I just use my wires here to tighten it up. Give it a little fluff. And then you can always fluff these after. It's not like you have to fluff them right now. Because you're going to be spinning your wreath, you know, 16 more times for your other puddles. But um, I actually enjoy working on these boards if you've seen any of my other videos. It's usually off of a board that we can already get ready to go and that's what makes for me it, it makes it a little more fun because it's a little easier um, even though I do make wreaths off of their frames I'm really fond of these round ones and if anybody is interested in a custom order if you go to my Etsy shop and you see something you like um, just contact me and I'd be happy to talk to you about a custom order. Uh, could talk about the details and what kind of colors you would like. Right, so when I moved that, I snagged this. You can see this is why you want to cover up your outer edge but you can just snip this off and kind of like no harm no fall I think this is still you know okay and hopefully I'm gonna get over my fear I keep talking to myself about doing TikTok and uh, some of the other crafters I know are like, oh, you just got to do some, start small and, you know, just do it. 
like, yeah, I'm not usually one that likes to talk in front of people, so I guess me talking to myself because there's not really anybody here listening to me kind of is different, but maybe one day I'll get there. Right now, I just, you know, do these YouTube videos, which I haven't done one for a while, which is why I'm doing this now, and post it out on YouTube. But I know a lot of crafters will go like live from their home and post. I'm sure they probably po could post that to, you know, TikTok rather than being live. But and then this one will just go over that one. So I'm going to go in through here. This is a um, cable tie tool. And what it does is when you get the zip tie in here, it'll tighten it and cut it. So if it's already tight enough, it just cuts. If it's not, it'll like tighten it down like that one and then cut it. And this is really nice too. It helps you get through, you know, this a little bit quicker. Plus that. I guess that's the other nice thing about working out of your home. If stuff falls on the floor, you can always clean it up after you're done shooting your video. And then when that happens, it's like, I think, I have to switch over to go back this way. You're, the actual um, roughness of the tie has to be in the gun or it doesn't work. And I have my board kind of going both ways here. So, and the reason that happened was because I actually stopped loading on the outer edge and started loading in the middle so that I wouldn't have to like reach over. And I wasn't really paying attention, so that was my fault. Okay, so this is what the board looks like after the first row is on. You can see how the, nice the leaves are laying and how they stay pretty pointed. I love this leaf. It's like one of the easiest ones to make. And oh, it's just as, I can't even tell you how easy it is to make. It's just... Sometimes I can't get all that other folding in like they do with some of the other petals, but this one is super easy to work with. And I'm hoping you can see. I wanted to like try and get this up a little bit more. Maybe that's better. Sorry for the rockiness there. So when you do see this on my YouTube channel, you want to leave a comment. If you actually like the video or if this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, if you can, you know, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and hit the bell, then you'll know when I actually upload more content. I appreciate anybody that's watching or following me. Use all the followers I can get. Just uh, Nana and everybody always, whenever they see my name and I join a live, they call me Nana. Or, and I'm like, oh man, I just really want to just go in there and say, hey, it's it's really a Nana because I'm a grandma. But they call me Nana. And so I'm just like, well, okay, what am I going to do? I'm not in the live. So 
these may just stay just like this because they're a little bit further apart and we'll see what happens when I put the next row on hopefully we'll get uh, the coverage we need because our center is actually pretty pretty big Actually wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to do a live today because or make our video our power had went out because it's been extremely windy here and we got snow after having like beautiful weather for almost a week it was like a few days of 80s high 70s I know the neighbors turned their air on I'm like oh, I'm not ready to turn my air on so yeah we've been having super nice weather until all of a sudden it snowed last night and a little bit today it's just like oh this is not good we're going in the wrong direction that's mother nature for you just when you think you know everything's going to be no more snow and it's going to be really nice out and it comes back to hit you just like oh yeah we weren't ready to leave yet I'm like okay so let's remove these tell me my hand strength is not that good because these are all getting tightened up as I'm doing them. That's okay. That's why I have this little tool to help me. We're ready for the red and I'm just going to show you this. I've got the second row on. One we're going to go for the third. I'm just going to kind of put this over. Because as you can see some of this when you put it in there kind of comes off. I actually do have garbage can down there. All right, and now we're gonna work on red. And in a minute, I'll show you why I chose to put the red in last. Because I think it's gonna give us the pop of color we're looking for. I just want to kind of show you. See how that's just going to pop with the red there? So we got our red, white, blue. It's looking nice. That'll, I think that'll look really good.
be one short. Not sure how that happened. Show you how I would burn it. I need it to see me do a whole pile. I plug in my wood burner, so. So I still have. I'm one short. I'm gonna have to wood burn that. Just wanna. This is gonna give us beautiful coverage. We're not gonna see anything from uh, the stuff once this is laid down and this other one is in. So let me really quick. This is where we're at so far. I need to cut one more petal here. So let me put this to the side. And here's my glass. So what I do is I just usually line it up on the board here. And I'll count out, I don't know if you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I just need to slide this over and I'll use my line four. Um, to cut this. Let me get my, my feel. Maybe we could do it without the wood burner. It's only one puddle. I'll just cut it in the middle. No. Let's just use the wood burner. It won't take that long for it to heat up. Let me get it plugged in. This is the wood burner I use. I got it from Amazon. Um, it has a temperature control here. It doesn't actually tell you um, how hot you, you're getting it. But I, when I turn mine on, I always turn it over into the red zone. So I know it's, it's hot enough that when I actually do start working, um, when I get this lined up, it's going to go right through here. And actually, I'm going to have to just figure out the 10 off of here and cut it because my camera is blocking some of my space. But I can leave it like that, and then I'll just cut it once. And sometimes I like to have my little thing here to put on the 10 line to make sure that I have it in between that row. You got to make sure that you kind of get it in between like these rows. This is like a kind of like a window um, or wide stripe, I guess I should say, a wide striped burlap mesh. So when you do burn it, you always want to cut it in between a row. And that's how you um, get the edges to fray less when you're right in between here. So sometimes I'm not steady, so I'll put a ruler on here. And then, you know, this doesn't usually take that long to heat up. It's hot, but I think it gave it, I don't know, if it's too hot or let me just see. Yeah, it's, it's almost ready to cut. So let's just give it another second or two. All right, 
We're almost ready. All right, and I just kind of keep it at this angle. And we slowly go down. And if anything didn't burn, you could just take your wood burner and kind of go over the spot. And just go back up here and go through and there. So let me just turn my wood burner off. Um, when you do burn, you should always have a well-ventilated area. Um, I'm working in a bedroom that's kind of big, and I'm only, I only burn to the one piece, but you should wear a mask. It does give off um, some kind of fume. And uh, so always be careful and cautious um, when you're using the wood burner. Let me put this away. And then let me just take this off because it'll be easier for me to cut that piece on my mat. And if you don't have a mat that's this big, I got a very big one. I got it for Christmas. It's 36 inches long. I think it's 36 by 36. I actually have some of my stuff sitting on it. But <clears throat> let's just get ready to cut this. I need my little ruler again so that I cut even. Again, I'll, I'll show you again. I got my edges my manufactured edges here and here and the cut edges here i'm just flipping it over you're going to do this curl side down when you make your cut <clears throat> and like i say i always Try and push down here in the front, and I go halfway, stop, slide my hands down, make sure I'm still lined up, and then finish cutting the rest of the way. All right, so <clears throat> factory edge to factory edge. I don't know, can you see that? I think it, factory edge, factory, factory edge. And you put them together. This is the most important part. You want to get this lined up so that you're, you've got your perfect corner. Use my clip, clip it. And then I always make sure that it's even all the way down. Same on this side. And then here's your middle. You kind of pull down and scrunch. And then one, two, three. This one, the one actually there. Three on this side. I always kind of make sure that this is down. And then one, two, three. And I don't have any other white raw rands out, but I'm just going to have a bunch of black ones. I'll just use a black one. Tie it. You only have to do that two times when you band. The bands come from Dollar Tree, and you can get like a hundred of them in a bag for you know a dollar and a quarter at my Dollar Tree. Uh, just let me even this out a minute. You take off the clothespin or your clip come underneath, just do a little stretch, and here is another petal. Your tips meet up, that's when you know that you've got it the way it's supposed to be. Let's bring the board back. We'll put this one in.
just going to turn this board over one more time. You can see how that looks so awesome with the blue, the white, and then the red. I just want to give it a little shake. All right, now on the back of the board, the one difference between using the boards I bought from Amazon and if you get a board from Unique in the Creek, the Unique in the Creek board actually have two other holes right here in the center that you can just pop your um, center into with the chenille stems. What I'm going to do is I'll have to uh, go right across like from each other. And here's my, my top. So I'll want to use these two right here to put my stems through. So I am going to kind of keep one of my whoops, one of my fingers over here. All in a day, people, all in a day. Only I would be able to like kind of drop that and Yeah, there it is right there. I don't want to go right across from that. It's nice about this center is it doesn't you don't have to have it lined up with anything so like the top of my this is the top of the wreath here up here so now that I have the stems through I just flip it over oh, sorry I had a cramp on my finger and we can pull it a little bit and then just keep it really tight And then we can just go ahead. I'm going to cut this just a little bit. Because these are going to go right back down into our holes. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to push this back in this way. And this one goes in like that. And then you see there's nothing there that's rough that's going to scratch your, your customer's door. Or own it. And I'm just going to push that back in, pull this back in, so I'm not really seeing the, the red. All right, then we can flip this back over, and I can put a hanger on it, which I have a lot of black, not a ton of white. I think I will use the white one for the back. It's kind of thin. Um, thicker one right here. There's a thicker one that I'm going to use for the hanger. And I am just going to go, I think I'll put it here this way so that I can hide the and all over it. I don't need this sticking out. When you look at the back, this looks so nice, doesn't it? Alright, I'm going to and put this in this way, get it all right down this way. Put this stick right onto it so it doesn't go into the actual
what I'm going to do is just slide this in through here. I'm going to rotate it around so that this doesn't stick out. You know what? This doesn't look like it's even going to be big enough. So maybe I'll take a chenille stub and use it. these two and wrap them around each other. All right there and then we can just pull this back and we've got our hanger right here. Well, that was pretty easy. All right everyone so that's about all I was going to show you for today. This is the 4th of July wreath. It'll be on my Etsy shop shortly. And again, leave your comments. And please like, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.